So, pesticides and herbicides, pharmaceuticals, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, and perfluorinated substances. These are all examples of micropollutants in our environment. And as our analytical chemists have become better over the years, we started to realize that most of these micropollutants, although in low concentrations, can be found almost everywhere, everywhere in nature. My name is Alexander, and during my PhD, I will look at the removal of micropollutants using adsorption. But before getting back to that, why is this a problem? Well, we've seen that even though these substances are present in low concentrations, they can still be harmful to the environment. For example, uh, synthetic estrogen, a drug that is commonly used in birth control pills, uh, have been seen to induce uh, feminization of male fish and also reproduction failure. And actually in one study they saw that concentrations as low as 5 to 6 nanograms per liter was enough to potentially cause the whole population to become extinct. These micropollutants differ a lot in character. Some are very poisonous, some may last in nature for decades, and some might accumulate in our uh, in our food chains. And actually, we've seen that in some biomass, for example, large fish, the concentrations may end up as much as one million times higher than in the surroundings. Now, these micropollutants have one thing in common, however. They're all man-made, and therefore man and woman will have to answer to their effects. And also, since we're at the top of the food chain, you are, you are not excluded from risk. Now, a major pathway of these micropollutants into our environment is through our municipal and industrial wastewater. But if, unfortunately, as Maya said earlier, our wastewater treatment plants are not designed to take care of these uh, micropollutants. So we need to add additional technique, treatment. In my case, I will look at the use of activated carbon for adsorption of these micropollutants, and specifically in wastewater. And the adsorption capabilities of activated carbon has been known for a long time. It originates from its large number of very, very small pores. And in these pores, the micropollutants can adsorb. Activated carbon, thanks to the large amount of small pores, also has a very large surface area. Actually, in fact, in only 10 grams of activated carbon, there might, might be as much area as in one football field. Now, a large area is not enough to absorb the micropollutants, since some of them are not attracted by the carbon surface. Also, in wastewater, there are a lot of non-harmful substances that will compete with the micropollutants for a spot on the activated carbon football field. Essentially, in my research, and hopefully in five years from now, uh, when I finish, I will know more about how to design these systems so we can absorb as many of these harmful micropollutants as possible while keeping the non-harmful substances as happy supporters. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think it, it is interesting that everyone, including newspaper reporters and reporters this summer, is uh, comparing all areas to a football field. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it was uh, not a coincidence. <laughs> yeah, it, just a coincidence. Yeah. The, um, uh, both you and Maya, you work with my, uh, micropollutants and pharmaceuticals and that kind of stuff. And we, we have uh, just heard about uh, the possibility to actually shorten the, the time for a pharmaceutical to end up in the sewage system. Yes. Yes. <laughs> is that a problem that you need to think about in your research, or is it, okay, we'll take that problem when we get there? Um, I think, I mean, it's, it's hard with, with pharmaceuticals in particular, because we need to use them. Uh, and some, some micropollutants we, we, we can get rid of, but when it comes to the pharmaceuticals, of course, we have to use them for for the sake of our health, and uh, in that case, it's hard to do something earlier on in the chain. And then, 
these kind of solutions might we have to put at the waste for the treatment plant, or maybe they can, in case we have a hospital, we can maybe put uh, the treatment earlier. Um, then also, I think we need to be very specific about when we introduce this uh, this treatment, because it's not always maybe feasible to do it, because it's expensive. And there's a, quite a lot of water that you actually need to handle. Yes. Uh, I mean, it's, it's not like a glass of water now and then, it's... No, it's like thousands of cubic meters every day. Yeah. So, yeah. And and with tiny, tiny amounts that you need to pass through all your your processing. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to be easy. Is it going to be cheap? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but but there might be solutions where we can find more more cheap alternative uh, to make biochar, for example. Uh, other materials that might be be cheaper. Uh, maybe also sewage sludge could be used to make activated carbon. Mm. Um, so we'll see. Thank you. Thank you.